Good morning, and now I'm gonna sneeze. So, we are at it. It is time to get back to work and get this truck unloaded. So last night, I gotta tell you, trying to get this U-Haul <laughs> up this driveway was a little terrifying. Uh, we had to try multiple times because at the end of this driveway, there's a gate. And as soon as you come in the gate, the driveway like curves. And on either side, there's like drop-offs. <laughs> Uh, there's like a culvert on one side and then the slope on the other. And we tried backing this, this U-Haul in first. That was a big no-go. Uh, there was no way to safely get it in backwards. And so thankfully, you know, there's enough space here on the driveway that um, we can get the U-Haul in here and then get everything unloaded and get past it easily. Um, yeah, that was a little, that was a little scary. Um, and then we had another issue. So U-Haul had actually reached out to us and asked us if we could haul a trailer for them because they needed a specific type of trailer, I guess, in this area. And they're paying us to do it. So we agreed to do that. Well, um, there's something wrong with that trailer. Like the handle that cranks it to, to lower the leg there's a pin in there and it's snapped. So we can't remove the trailer. So all the way down there is my truck full of stuff and we can't bring it up here. So we're gonna have to take my son's truck, take it down there, load everything from my truck to his truck to bring it up here because we don't drop the trailer off until tomorrow. If it's not one thing, it's another.
friends welcome back to the homestead so as you can see at the moment i am back in alabama uh gotta tell you there's not much left here at our alabama homestead uh we are down to the odds and ends miscellaneous stuff that always feels really chaotic um but uh, that is where we're at. We've got most of the things moved. Um, this week, our son and daughter-in-law and grandbaby are moving to Arkansas, so we'll be helping them. Uh, and I'll be staying in Arkansas for a few days, getting to work on some of the animal structures. And then coming back here and working on the house here, you know, there's still stuff that needs to be done. Um, there, there's the to-do list to get it ready to go on the market, which it's not a lot. It's just, you know, cleaning up outside, which is generally stuff you got to do anyways after winter. Cause you know, you always got to do a spring cleanup. Um, I do want to paint my office, uh, just kind of a little bit of a list of things that we want to do before we put it on the market. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update and share with you about this crazy move. Um, so we, oh, actually, let me open some windows first because it is, ooh, and you're gonna, I forgot my phone was sitting on the window there. All right. I am in a greenhouse after all, and it gets toasty in here. Um, so in the, in the process of hiding the fact that we were moving from all of you, our greenhouse is where I was actually keeping all of the shipping boxes or, or packing materials, the boxes, the paper and all that stuff. Um, it was all basically sitting out here. Like I shared the other day in a recent video, this past week was the big truck, like the big move. Uh, the giant 26 foot super mover <laughs> from U-Haul. Uh, that was interesting. I will just say this, when you are moving to the mountains, uh, it's not level terrain. You're gonna have dips and hills and uneven areas and moving a giant 26 foot truck into a very narrow precarious space not so uh <laughs> it's not stress-free <laughs> so as you saw my other son joshua was there he and his wife anna are the ones that are expecting the new grandbaby um think it's a boy, not 100% positive yet, but they're gonna be having another ultrasound here pretty soon and they, they should know for sure at that point. But they were there, very, very helpful. You know, it's always great to have another set of eyes when you're trying to move a truck like that. And uh, yeah. So while we were there working on the house, uh, boxes everywhere, absolute chaos. You could barely walk through the house. Uh, I actually heard my doorbell ring and I went and went to the door and realized there's somebody here. So I was able to meet one of our neighbors. Uh, there's not very many people that live on our road. There's, there's only a handful of houses, but her name is Cher. And not only did she introduce herself as one of the neighbors, but she even brought some housewarming gifts. She brought some homemade strawberry jam, uh, she brought me some flour sack towels, which are my favorite kind of kitchen towel. And she brought a loaf of homemade bread straight out of the oven, still piping hot, wrapped in a flour sack towel. It was such a joy to get to meet her. And apparently there's a few people on the road who have um, heard about my YouTube channel and have seen my videos. Uh, one of the people, actually, who has found out about my YouTube channel is Charlie. And Charlie is the guy who did all of that amazing stonework that you've seen a little bit of there. 
And from what Cher said, it sounds like Charlie would love to talk to us about it. So I'm hoping to get an opportunity to go and visit with Charlie and hear all about um, all of the things that he built out there and, and all of that. But Charlie had actually left a comment on one of the videos. Um, I believe it was the one that was the first look at the new homestead. Um, but unfortunately, uh, YouTube doesn't give us the ability to privately message people who leave comments. I kind of wish we had that uh, option to do that because I don't want this to sound like I'm trying to be secretive or anything like that. But because I do YouTube, because I have myself out there, I have to be very careful um, about security, honestly. And I, I don't put my home address out there. Um, I tell people whereabouts I live, but I don't make it public. And unfortunately, Charlie had left a comment, uh, you know, sharing that he had done all of this work and that he had worked for, I think he said 23 years um, on the stonework at our new home. Um, but he mentioned our street. And so I felt awful, but I had to delete the comment. And so I'm hoping that Charlie sees this and um, understands that, you know, it, it had nothing to do with the comment. I, I wish I had had the ability at the time to, to message him. Um, but we are just, we're just super careful. You know, we've got the grandbaby and um, I've, I've known, I've known other YouTube families who have had people show up at their homes and sometimes it's nefarious situations. And, you know, so we're just super careful about stuff like that. Um, we don't, we don't share our home address or anything like that. Just, just to be, just to be cautious, you know? Um, but I am looking forward to having the opportunity to talk to Charlie and hear all about, um, all about the things that he has done there, um, all of that stonework and everything. So, um, and you know, maybe meeting some more of my neighbors. Now, I did want to mention something that Cher brought up. She said something about the skull, you know, that, that goat skull that we discovered in the bedroom, or I should say, I discovered in the bedroom they kind of startled me now look we collect weird things like that I have a moose skull that we found in Alaska we have a um, I think we had a horse skull there for a little while there's deer skulls that we have found out in the woods and I don't know why this just got super dark but hopefully it's just my camera and not hopefully it's not something weird happening um, so we we collect weird things like that um and there's nothing you know creepy or you know weird going on it's just you know it's interesting we we put those things outside um it really only creeped me out a little bit because i wasn't expecting to find it and it was a goat skull. And just because, you know, there's a lot of weird things that go on with goat skulls, a lot of weird symbolism and all of that. Um, and, but the mystery may be solved as to at least where it came from. So it turns out that the property next to our property, uh, a lot of the people from the area call it the goat farm because I guess it was a huge goat farm for a long time. And so, you know, when there's livestock like that, you know, it happens, animals pass away. And when you have dogs that run loose, sometimes dogs or really coyotes, wildlife, they'll find bones and they'll bring it back. Like it's some sort of thing to be treasured. Uh, or a gift, you know, like like the farm cats who, who bring you a mouse because they think you're not a good hunter. Um, so there is a very good chance that one of the dogs that was roaming the area just found this goat skull and brought it back because the people that we bought the home from, uh, they did have dogs and the dogs did uh, seem to run loose and everything. Um, so most likely, it was nothing serious. Most likely someone just forgot it was in there. Um, but 
as an abundance of caution, I always like to pray over stuff like that just to be on the safe side. And so that is what I did. So I have been filming this video on my phone, which is not what I usually do, except we were about halfway back from Arkansas when it clicked in my brain. I don't have a camera. I left all of my cameras, all of my cameras, because I have more than one. I have my main camera, then I have my photography camera, and then I have two backup cameras for filming. Um, because, you know, when I do my cooking videos, you may notice that there's often different angles that, I am, that I'm filming from, and I kind of put that all together. Um, you need more than one camera to do that. So I, I have a few of them, and I left every single one of them in Arkansas. And so I'm filming today on my phone, which is why when it went dark a little bit ago, I wasn't sure what was happening because this is not how I usually film my videos. And my next video will probably be filmed on my phone as well. Um, but by the time these videos go up, we will already be he either heading back or already in Arkansas. But in any case, I am going to wrap this up and go get back to work. Um, like I said, there's not a lot left in the house, but there is still a lot to do. So thanks for hanging out with me here again at the homestead in Alabama. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to y'all next time.